Hello everyone and welcome to our first ever recording. This is the Pumpkin King and today we are going to be playing Pokemon Blue. Man, I gotta tell you, this is such a nostalgia trip for me. This was actually the first video game I ever owned. Uh, my parents got for me when I was but a wee lot. And I have been a Pokemon master ever since. Uh, fun story about this, actually, before we jump into it. Um, because I had the blue version, I assumed that the starter that I was supposed to have was Squirtle, because that was the first one that came up. So that was my first ever Pokemon. But for this playthrough, we will not be recreating that, although I would like to take a trip down memory lane. Uh, what we are going to be doing is we're going to be doing a special challenge that I've developed called the Rocket Program. And what we're going to be doing is basically we're going to be a member of Team Rocket. One thing that always bothered me when I was a kid is that Team Rocket is basically the worst. Like, they just suck so bad. Wow, that is a huge rush. Sorry. They just suck so, so bad at uh, catching Pikachu and just being bad guys in general are just the worst. So I figure we're going to show them how to do it right. We're going to be playing as a member of Team Rocket throughout the course of this playthrough. Uh, this is not going to be a Nuzlocke or anything like that. I uh, am going to be doing a few other challenges, uh, a couple of which I want to tell you about uh, before we jump into it. Um, the first challenge that we're going to be doing uh, through this playthrough is going to be something I call the Boulder Garden Challenge. And what we do is pretty straightforward. I have pulled up random numbers between 1 and 151. And those random, random numbers, those random numbers are the ones that we're going to be uh, using as the Pokemon that we must beat the Elite Four with. So for this playthrough, I have randomly selected numbers 149, 151, I'm still looking forward to catching Mew and using Mew as an actual Pokemon on my team, number 6, number 35, number 40, and number 141. So those are the Pokemon that we're going to be using. and. Uh, We'll be using those to defeat the Elite Four, but probably on the second uh, time going through. <laughs> Sorry, Chansey looked like she had a secret there. Um, but it'll probably be on the second time we go through uh, beating the Elite Four. Um, a couple other challenges that I'm throwing for myself as we play through this are I'm going to be catching every Pokemon uh, with just the regular Pokeballs. No Great Balls, no Ultra Balls. I'm going to make one exception for that from YouTube because I believe with this original version, you actually can't catch Mewtwo with any other Pokemon except the Master Ball. Um, but that's the only exception that we're going to be doing. Uh, and also, I've added, because I didn't have enough going on, uh, I've added also a Type Lock uh, onto this as well where we are going to be required throughout the course of the game to catch every Pokemon of a certain type. Uh, and the type that I was randomly generated was Psychic type, so that should be a lot of fun too. So let's go ahead and jump into this, and uh, we'll get started into the world of Pokemon. We'll start a new game. Hello there! Welcome to the world of Pokemon! My name is Oak. People call me the Pokemon Professor. The world is inhabited by creatures called Pokemon. For some people, Pokemon are pets. Others use them for fights. Because in this world, animal battling is totally okay. Like, I feel like there ought to be a uh, PETA in this world. People would get... No. It'd be, uh... Pet, pet, P-E-T-P, -P. people who for the ethical treatment of Pokemon. Myself, I study Pokemon as a profession. Get paid for doing that out? First off, what is your name? Well, my name is... Pumpkin! Let's go ahead and put this 
understand? I'm gonna use all caps because that's how it was back in the day. Because I never noticed that you could use lowercase, so everything's gonna be in caps. Right, so your name is Pumpkin. This is my grandson. He's been your rival since you were a kid. <laughs> since you were a baby. <laughs> oh, I remember him. Uh, what's his name again? Well, you know, guys, when I was a kid, I was very immature. And I would give him names like... Asshole. It's, I'm going to get a lot of mileage out of this. I really am. I'm going to get a lot of mileage out of this name. That's right. I remember now his name was Asshole. <laughs> Pumpkin, your very own Pokemon legend is about to unfold. A world of dreams and adventures with Pokemon awaits. Let's go. <laughs> Alright, so we are in the game. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change up the text speed. I forgot how slow it was. Everything is going to go really slow in this, I'm certain. Because this is in the days before you had running shoes and stuff like that. Alright. Pumpkin's playing the SNES. Okay. Yeah. So it's time to go. Yeah, Alright. Sounds good, game. The funny thing is, you know, you couldn't get Pokemon in the SNES. This was released originally on the Game Boy and then the Game Boy Color. But, uh, yeah, you couldn't get it on the SNES. Alright, let's withdraw the secret potion. And has anyone else ever thought about how weird the computer system in this game is? That you can just send physical items through a PC that runs on floppy disks? Because, I mean, this was 1995, man. Like, computers were tiny. They had tiny monitors and giant keyboards. <laughs> hey, Mom! Right! All boys have to leave home someday! It's also on TV! Professor Oak next door is looking for you! Well, boy, you know, I, I never really thought about this, but I, I live in kind of a terrible house, don't I? I mean, there's, there's one bedroom. Our TV is just sitting on the floor. There's a movie on TV. Four boys are walking on railroad tracks. I better go too. Yep, we're gonna have a Pokemon stand by me. It's gonna be great. All right, let's go talk to Oak. I, I did just want to take a moment and also mention, Pallet Town is, you can't really call it a town. Like, there's exactly five people that live here. And <laughs> there's only two houses, which makes you wonder where all the other people live. I mean, in fairness, it's not that far to Viridian, so I guess they must commute or something. But yeah, it's, it's just nuts. It literally is just my house, Asshole's house, and Oak's lab. Like, this is just the entirety of Pallet Town right here, right now. Anyway, let's go get Oak. Hey, wait! Don't go out! Here it comes. It's on sale. Wild Pokemon live in tall grass. You need your own Pokemon for your protection. I know. Here, come with me. Follow me, little boy, into my lab of wonders. <laughs> Bams, I'm fed up with waiting. That's you are, asshole. Asshole? <laughs> Let me think. Oh, that's right. I told you to come. Just wait. Here, Pumpkin. There are three Pokemon here. Ha-ha! <laughs> they are inside Pokeballs. When I was young, I was a serious Pokemon trainer. In my old age, I only have three left, but you can have one. Choose! Hey, Gramps. What about me? Be patient, asshole! <laughs> you can have one, too! Oh, I really am going to get so much mileage out of that name. It's going to be so much fun. Okay, so, because I am required to get uh, Charizard, number six, as one of my Pokemon for the Bulbapedia challenge, I am going to be getting the Charmander here. 
obviously prefers hot places. When it rains, steam is said to spout from the tip of its tail. I am going to get Charmander, but I'm not going to get it just yet, because I want to take a look at the other Pokemon, too. So, you want to fire Pokemon Charmander? And no. So, we're going to check out the other two Pokemon here, too. Let's take a look. This one is Squirtle. After birth, its back swells and hardens into a shell. Powerfully sprays foam from its mouth. Cool. Squirtle was the first Pokemon I ever had back in the day. Very first. I had a great time with it, and Blastoise is still, I think, the best Pokemon. You'll never convince me that Squirtle is not the best starter from Gen 1. I know, statistically, Bulbasaur is the best or whatever, but it's got to be Squirtle for me. And here's Bulbasaur. Number one. A strange seed planted on its back at birth. Plant sprouts and grows with this Pokemon. So, you want plant Pokemon Bulbasaur? No. We're gonna go with Charmanda. Who, in this sprite, I mean, he just looks like he's up to something. Like, normally Charmanders are kind of cute, but this one looks like it's got a dark past. So, you want the fire Pokemon Charmanda? Yes! This Pokemon is really energetic. Pumpkin received a Charmander. Do you want to give a name, name to the Charmander? Yes. Um, let's call this one... Uh, let's call this one... Rocky. Rocky! Man! Shoot it! Dr. Scott! Brad! Rocky! <laughs> it, for those of you who don't know, that's a reference to uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show, which is the best thing ever, really. I'll take this one in. You do that, asshole. <laughs> asshole received a squirtle. <laughs> Hope you name it Enema. Okay. <laughs> Let's go talk to Oak again. If a wild Pokemon appears, your Pokemon can fight against it. Cool. Whoa. Wait, Pumpkin. Let's check out our Pokemon. Come on, I'll take you on. Yeah, here we go. So, this fight, it's pretty much just luck. You just spam attack and you'll be fine. Unless he gets like a random critical. There's not really anything you can do about this one. Right, we're just gonna scratch. Critical hit. Good start. <laughs> this is also a good start. Scratch him again. Another critical hit. Man, I'm just kicking butt here right now. Scratch, 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 scratch. Three crits in a row? What is happening right now? Seriously, this doesn't happen. Scratch, 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 scratch! And... There he goes. And the Squirtle fainted. Rocky gained 70 experience points. Rocky Griddle level 6. Yay! <laughs> Pumpkin defeated, asshole! Nice. What? Unbelievable! I picked the wrong Pokemon! Yeah, that's right. Not only did I beat your Pokemon up, but now I'm taking your money. This will launch me onto my career for being in Team Rocket. Okay! I'll take my Pokemon fight to make you toughen it up! Gramps, smell you later! I fucking hate this guy. Like... Your rival has the most amazing ability to remain a cocky asshole even though he never wins any battles ever. Pumpkin, raise your young Pokemon to by making it fight. This is a messed up world, man. A kid, 10 years old, just gets a 
control of a fire-breathing lizard and is destined to make it fight against other things in order to make it stronger. It just, it doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. All right. So, let's go talk to this guy. You get a free potion from him. Hi! I work at the Pokemon. This is a convenient shop, so please visit us in Meridian City. I know, I'll give you a free sample. Here you go. I got another potion. Nice. Thanks, guy. I'm gonna walk on over to Meridian City. All right. I don't think this person gives me anything. I don't remember. See those ledges along the road? It's a bit scary, but you can jump from them. You can get back to Pallet Town quicker that way. Yeah. Well, I could get there faster if you weren't blocking my way. Okay, here we go. First Pokemon battle. It's a Rattata. Yeah. Okay, Rocky. You know what to do, bud. Scrap! I, I mean, I've never really liked Rattata. I've just find it's a really annoying Pokemon. For this playthrough, we are going to be using one on our team as one of the main heavy hitters. Um, because Team Rocket, man, again, they just are the worst. And they seem to really favor Rattatas and Raticates, so we're definitely going to be having one of those on our team. But before we can do that, we have to get ourselves some Pokeballs. So, let's heal up first real quick. Hey, Nurse Joy. Welcome to our Pokemon Santa. We'll heal your Pokemon back to perfect health. Shall we heal your Pokemon? Yes, please. Okay, we'll need your Pokemon. Thank you. Your Pokemon are fat and fair. We hope to see you again. That's a little messed up, Nurse Joy. You're hoping I'm going to get damaged and beat up? Well, that's, that's not real nice, but okay. Uh, let's go talk to the Poker Guy here. Hey, you came from Pallet Town. You know Professor Oak, right? His order came in. Will you take it to him? What do I look like? Uber? Oh, <laughs> yeah, apparently I do. Didn't ask for credentials or ask if I wanted to do it or anything. Just, you know, forced five minutes into the game and got ourselves a fetch quest. All right. Well, let's go deliver Oak's package. I work for Pokemon Amazon. I wonder how that would work. Like, you could have, like, a deli bird. I know in other games they actually have, like, deli birds do deliveries and stuff. And, I mean, I just feel like you would be able to send packages really easily in the Pokemon world. Pidgey! Aww. I love the design of Pidgey in the first generation. Look how chalky he is. He's so cute. Now let's scratch his face off. It seems kind of harsh, it does, and I, I'm genuinely upset, because I do like Pidgey. Pidgey's a great starter Pokemon. Uh, in fact, when I played this game for the very first time, Pidgey was the very first Pokemon I ever caught in the wild. Not real super surprising, since they're kind of all over the place, but I held onto that Pidgey right onto the end and evolved it into a Pidgeot and everything. It was great. And Pidgeot's still one of my favorite flying types of any generation. All right, Oak. Oh, Pumpkin! How was my favorite? How's my old Pokemon? Well, it seems to like you a lot. You must be talented as a Pokemon trainer. What? You have something for me? Pumpkin delivered Oak's present. Ah, oh, this is the custom Pokeball I order. Thank you. Don't lie to me, Oak. There's only one Master Ball, and Custom Balls aren't a thing until Gen 2. Gramps! This, this fucking guy. What did you call me for? <laughs> Alright, I have a request of you two. On the desk there is my invention, Pokedex. It automatically records data on Pokemon you've seen or caught. It's a high-tech encyclopedia. Oak and Pop <laughs> Pumpkin and Asshole, take these with you! <laughs> I'm gonna get so much joy out of that name, you have no idea. Alright, I got the Pokedex, yay! To make a complete guide of all the Pokemon in the world? That was my dream! 
but I'm too old. I can't do it. So I want you two to fulfill my dream for me. Making kids do your work for you for the second time today, Oh, This is really something, man. Get moving, you two. <laughs> this is a great undertaking in Pokemon history. You know, the thing that always bothered me about this is that even if you complete the Pokedex, even if you get all 151 species and you come back, there's no end game. There's no, like, thank you or animation or anything when you complete the Pokedex in any game. It's just like, oh, there's still more Pokemon out there. Yeah, well, of course there is, Oak. You know, I mean, <laughs> we only have 151 here. to what, 837 now? Something like that? Alright, anyway. Leave it to me, Gramps. Leave it all to me. Pumpkin, I hate to say it, but I don't need you. Well, I don't need you either, man. I know. I'll borrow a Tom map from my sis. I'll tell her not to lend you one. Pumpkin. <laughs> oh, your grandson is an asshole. Literally, that is his name, and also his function. The funny thing is that his sister obviously also thinks he's an asshole because she's totally going to give you one anyway. Grandpa asked for you to run an errand. Here, this will help you. I've got a town map. Bang. Just like that. Now, I mean, like, our rival is a jerk. There's no denying, but you have to kind of understand where he's coming from. I mean... Look at this, he lives in a single room house with his sister. At least we got him upstairs. At least we had a bedroom. At least we have a TV, he doesn't even have that. He doesn't even have a window, he's just, just a picture on the wall. This picture is literally the same picture as like what you get on a desktop to show like an icon for clip art. I mean, <laughs> this is a pretty shitty house. All right, let's get back to Viridian so we can get our Pokeballs. Heading back over to Meridian City. Yeah. Battle time. Another Rattata. This it's such a weird sprite for this Rattata. Like, it looks like its teeth are like broken, like they're pointing at you. Oh <laughs> dang, Rocky, alright. That's what I like to see. Mess them up! Hey! I'm gonna be thinking of that every time that I hear the name Rocky. It's either gonna be Rocky Horror or it's gonna be Rocky Balboa. It's one of the two. Alright, let's finally get ourselves some Pokeballs so that we can start catching some Pokemon. Hi there! May I help you? Take your time. Pokeballs. I don't want... Let's start off with 15. That ought to be enough for now. It's also going to use up a lot of my money, but that's okay. I'm not planning on losing any battles anytime soon. Yes! Okay. Yep. And away we go. Alright. So, it is time now catch our very first Pokemon. Now, we're probably going to get a Rattata. That's actually one of the Pokemon that we're going to be looking at here. Uh, we're probably going to get a Rattata. Another one I want to try and catch is a Nidoran male at this point. So I'm going to come over to this patch of grass right here and I'll try it out. And it's a Nidoran female. She's only level 2 though, so I think we're just going to go ahead and KO this one. Okay, cool. Let's get another one. It kind of bugs me that you can't... And it's another one, okay. Level 3. This isn't really helping. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and KO this. Like I was saying, it kind of bugs me that you can't get a Mankey and Blue version. It would make beating Brock a lot easier with a uh, Charmander for a starter. I mean... 
It's going to be particularly difficult anyway, since my primary Pokemon's probably going to be a Rattata. Excuse me, Rattata. But, uh, you know, we're going to do what we can do, so let's uh, see if we can find one. Of course, the one time you want a Rattata, you're not going to catch one. Come on, where are you? There we go. Spiro. Yeah, I'll take that. Normally I go with Pidgey. Like I said, Pidgey is definitely one of my favorite flying type Pokemon. But I think that for a Team Rocket build, at least until we can get hold of a Zubat, that uh, Spiro is probably the better one to go with. So let's go ahead and grab the Spiro. Pokeball, go! Wee, 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 yay! All right, Spiro was caught. New Pokedex data will be added for Spiro. It's bugs in grassy areas. It has to flap its short wings at high speed to stay airborne. You want to give a nickname to Spiro? Yes. We're going to call this Spiro Ben. He's Ben Spiro. Another Nidoran. And the scratch. And another scratch. And another scratch. Unfortunately, this part of the gameplay just isn't going to be all that interesting. Uh, it's going to be primarily just walking back and forth and scratching at every Pokemon I come across until I get my Rattata. I'd like to get a Nidoran male, but uh, they are a much lower drop rate, so it might take me a hot minute to get one. So we're probably just going to go ahead and... You know what? I'm, I'm just going to grab this Nidoran female right now. I'll just grab this one and get its Pokedex entry, but I am going to switch over to Pokemon, a um, Nidoran male as soon as I'm able to get one. Although, now that I think about it, Nidoran female does get double kick, which might be helpful against Brock. I think double kick is still a normal type move in the first gen. Spiro. I remember Spiro as being kind of a badass. Like, in the anime, it was, you know, the one that made Pikachu so ridiculously powerful. Which, it makes sense, you know, if you pick up that much XP from defeating that many Spiros all at once, it's going to make you a crazy powerful Pokemon. I just want to point out that I got into the anime hard long before I got the actual game. When I was a boy, I uh, actually got into Pokemon uh, through the anime, and then I did the game. And uh, I really, really wanted the game, but I couldn't get it until my parents got me a Game Boy for my birthday, which I knew was coming. Uh, so what I did was I actually rented the uh, game from Blockbuster Video, which, <laughs> for those of you who are young millennials, you don't remember Gen, uh, millennials and Gen X and Gen Z and all the rest of those, you don't remember... Uh, the blockbuster video. It was basically like Netflix, except a brick and mortar store that you could rent <laughs> video cassettes from, that you have to rewind back to the beginning in order to be able to watch them. You could rent video games too, and uh, I did. I rented Pokemon Blue for goodness, the whole weeks at a time. 
Because you can only rent it for like three days, but then you can renew your rent, uh, your rental. So I rented it for a long, long time. I did the whole game before my parents even bought me mine. But uh, yeah, I, it was a blast. I was a huge Pokemon fan when I was a kid. I had everything. I had the merch. I had the, all of the um, posters. And I knew all the names of the Pokemon and all the rest of it. I was an absolute huge Pokemon fan. And, I mean, I still am. I've played every generation, uh, except the most recent one. I haven't played Sword and Shield yet. Uh, but I've played every generation of Pokemon so far, and probably will cover a good amount of that here. But anyway, uh, I, I really love this game. It's such a nostalgia trip for me. Yay, we learned Ember. That's going to help out against Brock. Not amazingly, but it is going to help. Let's gonna go ahead and switch out these Pokemon so we can get some of these started to level up. And I guess I'll grab a Rattata from down here. Since I don't seem to be having any luck with it. The Viridian Woods. So let's go ahead back down to two. So, just gotta grab ourselves a Rattata and then uh, we'll start focusing on leveling up. I want to make sure that I've got the... Aw, oh, Pidgey! Um, I want to make sure that I've got the Pokemon that I need uh, first, and then I'll probably go into a time lapse for a little while uh, while we get them leveled up and everything. It's so weird that Gust doesn't count as a flying-type move in this game. It's just a normal type move. It's very odd. Whoa, oh, this bitch is actually gonna wreck me. Okay, here we go. There we go. Alright, good to go. There we go, it's a Rattata. Oh, and it's a pretty decently leveled one, too. Great. Uh, so we'll go ahead and switch out for Rocky. And uh, we'll get ourselves our rock Pokemon. I reckon I could probably catch it now. It's below half. Let's give it a try. Okay, cool. Rattata was caught. New Pokedex entry will be added for Rattata. Bites anything when it attacks. Small and very quick. It is common sight in many places. <laughs> well, that is the understatement of the century. These things are so annoying. They are the most annoying Pokemon because they're just everywhere. These and friggin' Zubats, man. You just get so tired of them. But we're going to go ahead and call this Rattata. Um... I'm dungeon. The reason for that is because a friend of mine used to have a hooded rat pet named Hum Dungeon, and she was so sweet and so cute and so soft and just everything that you would imagine a rat to be, the complete opposite of that. Like she was such a sweet rat and so pretty. And so loving too, very affectionate. Then, my other friend had a pet rat named Patapon that was everything that you would expect a rat to be. Uh, he was greasy, bitey, nasty. It really just served to illustrate the difference between the two of them. Alright, so we've got ourselves our Ratata. Let's go ahead and switch that up here. We want to try and get... Rotata to have a quick attack as quick as possible. It's not going to be all that helpful, but it is going to be very useful later because we're going to be doing that uh, quick attack hyperfang combo that's so deadly with the Raticate. 
Oh, of course. Now I get a Rattata. Alright. Well, you two shall battle to the death for my amusement. The sprite for Rattata is so weird. Like, the back sprite? It looks like the tail is growing out of the center of its back. It's very interesting. And another one! You know, I genuinely do wonder if the first Pokémon in your lineup affects what Pokémon you encounter. I mean, maybe I'm just paranoid or whatever, but like, it feels like it makes a difference. I don't know. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> I was thinking it was going to okay, right now. This is another reason I hate Rattata's by the way. Like, they are the worst when it comes to doing like a Nuzlocke challenge because you'll be out here in the grass you know just training up your Pokemon and they'll be like double the level that uh, is of all the Pokemon that are around in this area and you'll come across a Rotata and you won't be able to run from it and it'll just get a random critical off and kill your Pokemon like, literally, every time I've played a Nuzlocke, it's never been a problem where I am losing uh, Pokemon in battle. Like, I've never lost any Pokemon in battle with another trainer. It's always, always to random wild critical Pokemon. And it's so annoying. All right. So, I think we can head on up into the Viridian Forest now. First, let's talk to the old guy. Ah, I've had my coffee now and I feel great! Surely you can go through. Are you in a hurry? Yes. Time is ready, go on then. <laughs> I'm just playing, all right. Come on, old man, show me the way to, uh... <laughs> show me the way to catch a Pokemon wrong. So you're using a Pokedex. When you catch a Pokemon, Pokedex is automatically updated. What? You don't know how to catch Pokemon? I'll show you how then. We're just going to encounter a Weedle right here in the middle of the town. Wild Weedle appeared. Just chuck a Pokeball at it. Doesn't weaken it or anything, just chucks it. I mean, like, this technique does work sometimes, but not usually. First, you need to weaken the target Pokemon. Yeah, but you didn't. You taught me how to do it wrong, old man. Come on. All right, let's jump into the Viridian Forest. Oh, well, first we're going to find another Rattata. Kick his ass! So, when I was watching the anime, I really thought that Viridian Forest was going to be much more of a challenge than it is in the game. Because, like, when Ash was in the Viridian Forest, he was there for, like, jeez, I don't know, three episodes or something like that? And, here, you can get through it without even stopping or even encountering a Pokemon at all. And, uh, it's, it's crazy easy. So, I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and switch out Hummy here, and we're going to send you in. Now, I'm not what you would call a competitive Pokemon player. Like, I'll go up against the CPU all day long, but if you put me in battle against actual people, I don't tend to do very well. Um, mostly because I don't really get into the whole specific training or anything to try and raise individual stats. It just kind of happens the way it happens. Uh, and... 
That's pretty much how I go about it. Uh, it it's not really like mm, this guy would be my KO me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well. Time to send in the Pokemon that's going to be super effective. Get Rat Caterpie. Yeah. Well, that's good, I guess. Alright, well, let's go heal up Humdudgeon, and uh, then we'll come back. This is the part that's so grindy, really. Like, when you're first starting out in Pokemon, your Pokemon are weak as anything, and then... You have to train them up in order to be able to get them strong, which I know that's kind of the point, but yeah, I don't know. It just seems really slow until you beat Brock. Like, this whole stretch between Pallet Town and Pewter City is just really slow. Because you're just trying to get your Pokemon up to a decent level, and it's very grindy. But it'll pick up quickly after. So, let's go ahead back to the forest. I'd like to at least get to the second fight with uh, our rival for, before the end of the episode today. So let's go train up our Pokemon before we do that. What I'd really like to do is catch a Pikachu. <laughs> Again, I'm doing the rocket challenge, so catching a Pikachu would be <laughs> really awesome because, you know, again, part of the reason I didn't like Team Rocket in the series is because there's no threat. You know, they never do anything. They're just so terrible. They're the worst trainers. They can't catch Pikachu, and it's not like it's particularly difficult, you know? Admittedly, the drop rates on Pikachu in the Viridian Forest are not particularly high, but it's not hard. I mean, it's not difficult to find them at all. All right. We're going to tackle this Metapod. It's going to take quite a while because he's just going to keep on defending. Yep. Metapods and Cocoon are a good way of gaining XP because they're usually like a fairly decently high level. Um, but it is so slow beating them. The only thing that really makes it worthwhile is that this level you don't have very much in the way of HP on anyway. So even if your strike is only doing one damage each time, Eventually you'll get him down. I'm curious to see how many tackles it's going to take to bring down this Metabot. Already at 26. I have 30. 5. 25. There we go. Level 5! Woo! Let's go ahead and switch out Ben. I always like to keep my Pokemon roughly the same level. It's just a personal preference. I don't particularly like having one Pokemon be much, much stronger than all the others. But uh, we'll make quick work of this here, Metapod. game for this playthrough, I'm doing the uh, Bulba Garden Challenge, as I said, and uh, I've done it before with this version, and I got stuck with the worst possible Pokemon. Like, I got stuck with a Metapod, and 
When you're doing the Boulder Garden Challenge, you can evolve the Pokemon to their final form, which is good. It's helpful to have Butterfree, and they're not terrible Pokemon, but, like, because you can catch a Metapod in the wild, I had to catch a Metapod to use that on my team, not a Caterpie, and it was so annoying. I just had to keep switching it out until I was finally able to get it to evolve into Butterfree. It was such a drag. All right, let's have our first real Pokemon battle. Hey, you have Pokemon. Come on, let's battle them. Bugcatcher wants to fight. They don't even have names. They're just Bugcatcher. Ideally, I'd like to get a Weedle while we're out there. Beedrill would be a nice Pokemon to have. This is specifically because of that poison stack. It's a pain in the butt. Poison might be helpful. I don't know. Poison might be helpful against Brock, too. If I can get his Onyx poison, that would be helpful. Anyway, I'm just spamming tackle. It's literally all I can do. I'm not gonna bother with tail lip or anything. Poison in this game is so annoying because it just kills your Pokemon so quickly. Whenever I'm doing a Nuzlocke, I hate coming through the Viridian Forest for exactly this reason. Weedles are so crazy. Like, they are genuinely no joke when you're doing a Nuzlocke, because they will just absolutely wreck your team if they get you poisoned. Of course, I don't have an antidote on me. I think there's one here in the forest, but I think some Dutch is probably not going to uh, last that long. So. Fortunately, we're not doing our Nuzlocke right now, so don't have to worry about it. Yep. It's been a minute since I played this. Uh, yep, there it is. Alright, well, that's good to have. Go on back. Heal up, I'm dozen. I'm gonna go ahead and jump into a time lapse right now, guys, through the Viridian Forest. I'll slice back in if we find a Pikachu or something like that, but for right now, this is pretty much going to be our lives just out here beating up bugs. Um, and then uh, once we get everybody up to a reasonable level, we'll take on our rival again. So we'll go ahead and do a uh, time lapse right now. Pikachu is, I think, one of the better Electric-type Pokemon in this version. Uh, I don't really need it, but I just really want it, because I'm going to capture Pikachu, something that Team Rocket wasn't able to do, and still isn't able to do, in over 30 years <laughs> of playing and trying to 
almost 30 years of trying to catch Pikachu, and we have still not succeeded in doing it. I'm gonna do it right now. Also, having an electric type Pokemon is going to be. Oh, what? Having an electric type Pokemon is going to be really helpful when we go up against Misty. Although, by then, I should also have access to Grass type. There we go. Pikachu's cut. I really don't know why they call it an electric mouse. It clearly looks like a rabbit. And yeah, I know, it's based on a real world animal called a Pika. But I don't think they really look like mice. We have a nickname to Pikachu. Ash didn't name his, and I'm not going to name mine. Alright, back to the grind. So this part of the recording didn't come out properly. Uh, I kind of erased part of it by mistake. Um, so we're going to go ahead and wrap up here for right now. I hope you all enjoyed, and if you did, consider subscribing. Uh, there will be more adventures in the world of Pokemon coming up very soon. Until then, I am the Pumpkin King, and uh, I'll see you next time.